My lab is home to something that shouldn't exist. Part 1. Written by Silent Island. I work in a research and development lab for computer parts. The lab is roughly the size of an American football field. I work the night shift, coming in at 8 p.m. and staying until 8 a.m. Long 12-hour shifts full of boring tests and troubleshooting. A normal night for me is filled with loading parts into testers and unloading them to send the data to whoever needs it. And maintaining the test equipment. The pay is good, the job is easy, and in all honesty, the job is very interesting. It's just that sometimes it can get monotonous. On this particular night, one of our machines failed to reach the proper temperature of negative 15 degrees Celsius at around 2 a.m. This is a fairly regular issue which usually means that a chiller unit has malfunctioned or that there is a leak in the refrigerant line. Upon inspection of the chiller unit, I found that it was functioning fine. Temperatures set correctly, pressures set correctly, but I did notice that the reservoir was low. It's leaking somewhere, I thought to myself. Leaks are one of the most annoying problems to deal with, as our refrigerant lines are long and have many bypasses, and the refrigerant itself evaporates within 30 to 45 seconds of hitting the air. It's not like there is a pool of liquid to blatantly say, I'm leaking right here, please come fix me. So, I grab the small handheld leak detector and I start slowly running it down the line. I get to where the line goes under the floor and still no leak. Our entire lab is on what is called a raised floor, meaning that there is about three feet of space between our floor tiles and the actual concrete floor below. It's designed this way, to have space for all the pipes, wiring, and various water and chemical lines to get where they need to be without cluttering up the lab and causing trip hazards. Again, I sigh to myself and grab the tile puller and start pulling the tiles above the refrigerant line. After I have the entire line exposed from chiller to machine, I step down into the long rectangular hole that I have created, thinking to myself that the hole looks like a long, deformed Tetris piece. As I am on my hands and knees, slowly moving along the line, looking for the leak, slightly frustrated that this just had to happen on my shift, I look around under the raised floor. Despite how tidy the lab is above the floor, It's surprisingly lawless down here. The hard metal pipes are the only thing that seems to follow any pattern. Wires and soft pipelines lay strewn about haphazardously, entering and leaving the tile floor above wherever they're needed. Lines and wires entirely too long for the purpose that they are needed for sit tangled and covered in dust all around me. I always found it slightly creepy down here. It's dark, except for the light coming from where I pulled up the tiles above, and the small slivers of light leaking in where the various wires and pipes entered and exited in the distant parts of the underfloor. About two-thirds of the way down the line, my detector beeps at me loudly, bringing me out of my trance. Bingo! found the leak. The outer foam layer is completely shredded at this spot. It's strange, but not out of the ordinary. There are many sharp edges, and this pipe could have been rubbed against them at any time. Maybe even many times in the years that it's been down here. I cut away the foam to reach the braided steel wire below. What the... The pipe is just as shredded as the foam. With the breach revealed, I watch as the refrigerant leaks out onto the floor from the shredded mess 
and creates a small pool before quickly evaporating. I look around for anything that could have done this to the pipe. There is nothing. No sharp edges nearby, and certainly nothing that could have made braided steel look like shredded paper. Puzzled and more than a little creeped out, I stand up and call my co-worker over to check it out for a second opinion. Dude, look at this, it's all chewed to hell. Kevin steps down into the hole with me and examines the pipe. Well, that's odd, Kevin says as he turns the pipe over in his hand. The damage is about six to seven inches in length on the pipe. What do you think could have caused something like this? You've worked here longer than me, I explained to him. He grunts as he continues to examine the pipe. After a long moment, he sets the pipe down and pulls himself back onto the raised floor. I don't know, man. What I do know is that since this is not a joint or a fitting, you're going to have to replace the entire line. Let me know if you need help. I know it's tedious, but uh, there isn't much a second person can do to help. This will probably take you the rest of the night, so I'll handle the rest of the lab. Kevin shrugs apologetically, but he is right. A second person can't really help in this repair. I shut off the chiller unit and run the purge processor to move all of the liquid back into the reservoir, and I set about removing the pipe from the chiller itself. I then head back down under the floor to remove it from the bottom of the machine that it's attached to. It's dark and cramped because I'm under a large machine, lying on my back, turning a wrench. Something skitters quickly nearby. I twitch my head in the direction of the sound but can only see about 15 feet into the darkness. I scan as much of the darkness as is possible. It's just a stupid rat, I think to myself. But the idea of something supernatural is going through my head since I am, after all, deathly afraid of the supernatural or paranormal. After a long scan of the area, I stilled my emotions and finished unscrewing the pipe from the machine. After stepping back on top of the raised floor, I can feel relief pour over my entire body. That simple, quiet skittering sound like fingernails quickly tapping on a chalkboard had terrified me even more than I had realized. I looked over at the various machines and saw Kevin working loading up units into one of our larger testers, and just knowing that someone else was here with me made me feel some modicum of safety. I disposed of the 20-foot pipeline into the scrap area, and grabbed a new line from inventory. Upon grabbing the line, my mood immediately brightened. The new lines came pre-insulated. I would not have to put the blasted foam on myself. I happily connected one end to the chiller and dropped the rest below the floor and prepared to stretch it out to the machine. My good mood was immediately gone as I realized I must go back down there. Before stepping down, I grabbed a flashlight and lay on my stomach and lowered my head in, checking in all directions for anything out of the ordinary. I am hoping to see signs of rats or mice to verify that that's all that I heard. Nothing. There is nothing out of the ordinary. This makes me even more uneasy, because whatever was skittering likely also shredded the pipe, and my flesh is a lot softer than braided steel. I took several deep breaths to calm myself. I work in a lab under many layers of security. There was a logical explanation for this. Yeah, complete BS, I muttered to myself. Again, I steeled my nerves and stepped down, flashlight in one hand, the end of the pipe in the other. I get under the machine again. The nearest light source is about six feet away, 
since I can't pull tiles from under the machine. I lay on my back and balance my flashlight on its end so that it's pointing straight up at the pipeline that I'm connecting into. They're skittering again, this time louder and closer. I flinch my head to my right to look where it came from again. I strain my eyes, but see nothing in the darkness. Resolving to finish this up as fast as possible, I start screwing the pipe in quickly. The skittering comes from the same place again. I flinch to the right to look again and knock down the flashlight that's on my left. I swear loudly and I turn to my left to grab the flashlight and I see it. My flashlight has illuminated it. It stood roughly ten feet from me, about a foot tall, but about six feet wide. Its body roughly the shape of some sort of misshapen cockroach. Four very long, skinny legs about the thickness of a broom handle protruded from it like a spider, getting skinnier with their length ending in pinpoint sharp tips where they met the floor. Its body was pure black and glossy. Where its face should be, there was nothing but a mouth, wide open as if to show off its perfectly arranged four white fangs and row of small razor-sharp teeth that stood in stark contrast to the rest of its body. And then it moved. It was not natural. I heard the skittering sound as each needle point foot landed on the concrete of the underfloor. It was suddenly upon me, faster than should be physically possible. I felt as its teeth punctured my shoulder, sending rippling waves of pain down my arm and into my torso. I screamed loudly. Tyler! I heard Kevin shout as I lifted my head and saw his horrified expression as he looked down from the spot where I had pulled the tiles. I saw him jump down and crawl towards me, but I realized I was getting further away. This thing was dragging me away. I thrashed and fought as I watched Kevin my only hope getting further away. I then felt my heart drop into my stomach. In what seemed like slow motion, I watched as another thing suddenly seemed right next to Kevin. I saw as it bit into his neck. I heard a strange gurgling screech escape his mouth. And then Kevin was pulled into the darkness opposite of me.